Okay, friends, welcome back. We have some pretty exciting stuff to get into. We are going to look at animating based on tops. We are going to look at audio reactive geometry. And finally, we are going to look at creating geometry with no guiding stops whatsoever. Generating T, X, T, Y, and T, Z positions from nothing that comes with those things inherently. So let's get started. So the first thing we wanna do, we wanna animate based on tops. We already have a pretty good setup for that. I'm gonna pull this up and view it just so we can see because we're already using our red channel, right, as our Z depth position, right? So this means that if I were to take, let's say a ramp, boom, and I were to plug this ramp into this res, it's already gonna be popping this out because we have a wonderful modular network and that is makes it easy to do this. So if I were to take this ramp and I were to make it, let's say radial instead, and then I were to come into the phase and I'm gonna say abs, abs for absolute time dot second times maybe 0.1. Ooh, look at that. That's so pretty. Wow, look how it pops off and builds up. That's really cool, right? Because we know that the point with the lowest red value in this top, right, is going to be the furthest away. And the highest red value where it's closest to white is going to be the closest to us. So this makes sense. Look at that. That's so fun and pretty, right? So it's very easy if you think about it. If I'm going to duplicate this ramp and make it something else, right, I could take this ramp and I could have this ramp be, you know, horizontal right and i could and now it's gonna pop back oh ooh, that's that's fun that's so fun and cool right it'll do this or i can between this ramp and this res i can insert a transform boom and i can rotate it awesome so that's pretty cool right so you can see how it can be very easy to create animations right you can use tops as almost a previs right if you know the kind of movement that you want your geometry to be able to do you don't have to use the animator comp if that doesn't make as much sense to you if you're a more visual person you can use tops to guide your geometry just as long as you know that you're driving it off of something that makes sense right does that does that work I want this to be audio reactive, right? So what if I wanted to make like a woofer, right? Like I, I want to make this look kind of like a speaker, right? So I'm going to take my ramp and I'm going to stop my ramp from moving because that's cheating because it has to just move based on the sounds. So I'm going to say, no, don't do that. And I'm going to make it circular. That looks kind of like a woofer, but I want it to look like a woofer. So I'm going to make the period smaller so it has more rings, more rings. Yeah. There we go. That looks kind of like a woofer. That looks kind of like a speaker or a flower. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, cool. So now I have to figure out how do I make this like thrum with sound, right? How do I make it go boom, 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 boom. That's what I want, right? So uh, we already know that by animating the phase of a ramp, you can get it to move. So I kind of want that to happen, right? So let's grab an audio file in. Beautiful, and I'm gonna put an audio device out just so that you can hear it. Boom. So here's my audio file, right? I am actually going to use a super helpful and really cool tool from the palette. Oh, oops. From the palette called, if I go into tools, audio analysis. Beautiful. And I'm gonna grab it and drag it in, catch the freeze as it always does. Yay! There she is. Okay, awesome. Close that back up. And so if we look into this, I'm going to take this, I'm actually going to drag them all, alt M, just put that in here. And I'm going to grab another null, boom, boom. Beautiful, right? If we come in here and see what we get out, we get, this is such helpful information. This is a really great way to break down a song, right? So we have the lows, the mids, the highs. We could really use that to make geometry that has really specific, satisfying reactions. So. I'm gonna use the low because the low looks really strong. That that makes that looks like it makes a lot of sense to me, right? And just to make it a little bit more satisfying, I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna grab a select, awesome. Just gonna ask for the low, beautiful. Then I'm gonna add like a lag, just to sort of make it like cool, kind of smooth it out, and and I want it to kind of like like rumble in the sky more, right? Rather than just like fumble, like hit it too chaotically, right? Then I'm gonna come to my ramp. I'm gonna take my phase, I'm gonna take my low, drag it, boom, export chop. Oh, wow, look, 
that's audio reactive geometry mama so that's just one way to do this you can use instancing right and this obviously this is very very minimally audio reactive right but it's like you know nevertheless hopefully that gives you an idea right of how to do it right so okay so we have our audio reactive geometry we have animating by tops now the last thing that we are going to do is we are going to try and create a piece of instance geometry using no guiding tops whatsoever copy paste new guy new day grab this guy shift control grab all of them delete everyone <laughs> we're starting from scratch let's let's make a little deal with ourselves that we are going to have at least tx ty tz and i've decided that i actually would like to color based on tx tz color by position again because i just like the way that it looks right so i'm gonna leave my box then I'm not going to grab a stop of any kind. I'm just going to grab a top. I'm going to grab a noise top because what, what else, what is better than a noise top for generating random positions, right? So I'm going to come to my noise. I'm going to come to my monochrome, turn it off because I do not just want to drive something off the red channel. I want to drive something off of the red, the green, and the blue. This is the choice that I have made, right? I want to drive my positions off my red, my green, and my blue. But I also want to drive, let's say, how tall my boxes are off of the blue. I want to drive the rotation off of the green. And I want to drive something else off of the red that I'm going to decide later. Okay, so when I come to my noise, I'm going to drop a res again. There she is, beautiful. Resolution. Boom. I'm going to make it 70 by 70 because that worked well. Custom. Again, I could just hard code this into the noise top itself, but this is better in case I ever want to switch it out. I also want my noise to translate. I send it open. Beautiful. Also, I've been using abstime.seconds for the duration of this tutorial, uh, just so that you know, if I was making this for a project that I had to perform in front of an audience, um, I would use a constant and plug it into a speed shop because that is another number that just increases forever but that is a number that increases forever that you can reset anytime you want whereas abs time you have to restart touch in its entirety and i can't really do that if i'm in front of an audience so for right now totally fine because we're just prototyping we're just seeing what stuff does but just for you know pro tip all right so i have my res and i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna come here grab my top chop stunning Come here, crop, full image. This is one of the heftier parts of the calculations, right? So you kind of only want to use top to chop as few times as you possibly can, right? So grab this, go top to chop, grab a shuffle. You guys know this now, you're old pros. Come here, sequence channels by name. So I got my red, I got my green, I got my blue. I'm gonna grab a rename, rename, because I want these to be called TX, TY, TZ. I'm gonna say from asterisk. This is just by default gonna do it in the order, so I'm not gonna write red, green, blue. I'm just gonna let it be that. I'm gonna call it TX, TY, TZ, beautiful. Then I'm gonna grab a merge because you guys know how I like to do it. Merge, boom, boom. Oh, wow, look at that. That is some pretty cool stuff, you guys. I just really like how that looks and you know so remember it's currently being colored by its point positions right because we did that so that's why it's these really beautiful colors that make sense for um all of this so the the point positions that it's using are the amount of color positions in this top right so the x and the y and the z are the red and the green and the blue and you can see that because now remember how we were doing those animations and changing the movement based on the tops that's going to work even if it's not a top on a canvas and i will show you how if i were to see how this noise is super like actually let me pull this up too so that you can see it see how this noise is super jagged and rough if i were to come into this noise and i were to increase the period let's say make it smoother see how they become like blobbier and they want to stick together more I want them to do that even more. So I'm actually going to come into my harmonics and reduce them. Oh, wow. That's really nice and satisfying, right? Isn't that kind of cool? So now you can see also the kinds of things that are possible. Like if I were to come in here and take a level or a blur, I mean, blur. Boom. Blur. Cool. And I were to make it even more sticky together. <laughs> right because i'm shrinking i'm literally shrinking 
the distances between the colors and the and so when I shrink the distances between the colors I also shrink the distances in the sizes right because the sizes are coming from the colors so the whole thing gets smaller and globier right isn't that like this is uh, this is just a great way to sort of literally visualize what all these operators are doing and that can be really helpful when you're learning shaders because each of these operators is just a shader right and so you can really get a better sense for what's going on right so I can delete this blur um, and maybe I can put in, here's another thing, is a level, if I put in a level, a level has a super handy page in the RGB page for low R, low green, low blue, high, you know, all this stuff. So if we remember, the red currently is the X. So if I were to say that the red can't go from 0 to 1, it can't go from 0 to 1, it can only go from like 0.5 to 1, I'm going to change the lower X bound of this box, right? This, the level page, when you're make, when you're using instancing to instance a, a top, a noise top, is essentially like, it's a bounding box now, right? And you can think of all the ways that you can animate these, right? You could, you could tie each side of these to a side of a cube and have that bounding box move around. And if we're using it like a bounding box, right, this can get you into thinking about your pixel formats, right? Because if you take it, if, if you don't put it into 32-bit float mode, if you so if you come in here in pixel format, I think currently it's just, oh, it's in 32-bit float. If I left it in 16-bit fixed, that would mean that it's clamped, so at, at zero to one, right? So if I were to come into my level page and my RGB and say, I want you to go to negative one, It'd be like, no, and it'd push up against the side. And that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. I'm kind of not upset about it. So if I were to change these all to be negative, no, negative one, boom. Hey, hey, and two. Everywhere it says zero, I'm going to change to negative one. Everywhere it says one, I'm going to change to two. I like how that looks. I bet it doesn't have to clamp like that. If I change my pixel format, if I come in here and I say, I want you to actually be 32-bit float, whoa she's free and I can change this bounding box right by changing the size on this level page right you can also do this with the math top if I grab a math top math top boom and I plug it in here and replace this with this right the math top I can do basically the same thing I can come in here into range just like in a regular math top and from the red range I can instead of saying zero to one I can do negative one to one Oh, because I did not convert the pixel mode, common, pixel format, 32-bit float. Boom, there she goes. She's extended. She's free. She's a free lady. That is pretty fun and exciting so far. I'm just going to do the same thing that I did over here. One, two, one, two, negative one, two, negative one, two. So... These two things do a very similar thing, right? How do we decide which one we want to use? Well, here is another fun touch designer trick. If you double tap on your trackpad with like tap with two fingers, go to info, you can see the cook time right here. So the cook time, your GPU cook time is basically nothing. Our CPU cook time is 0.12-ish, 0.13-ish, right? Okay, that's fine. So for the math, if I check on the level, let me go here, info. Or again, should be cooking this kind of thing, but here this cook time is a little bit more. It's actually 0 0.17, 0 0.18. So I have seen the level is less efficient. I am therefore going to use the math top for my calculations in the future. I'm going to delete this level. Goodbye. And I'm going to use the math top instead. And again, that's a really wonderful way that we can use touch to help us with our optimization process. So anyway, getting very off track here, Ray, my goodness, we said that we wanted to drive our spin by our green and our height by our blue at the very least. And we still don't know what we're doing with our red. So let us just make sure that we do that. Okay. So out of my shuffle, I'm going to grab a select, select, boom, here we go. I want to take my select. I know that I want to grab my green because that's what I want to grab my rotation by. Then I'm going to grab a math because we are rotating. So we can't be zero to one. We have to be zero to 360 or we could be, you know, or we could be negative 180 to 180. That sounds fun and cool. Let's do that. Amazing. Okay, beautiful. And I'm also going to rename this spin. Cool. And then I'm going to shift command C, command V, copy paste. Cool, cool, cool. And instead of my green, I'm going to grab my blue. I'm going to call it S Y for height, right? Size Y, scale Y. And from here, I'm going to have it be one. I want to have it be like as tall as it is. Or I want it to get up to, I want it to be like really tall. I want it to be like 
three times as tall as it is, right? So I'm going to take all of my new stuff that I just took. I'm going to grab, I'm going to take map, I'm going to shift, drag them both together into my merge. That will connect them both if you have them both selected. And now they're both being sent into the merge, so I just have to come into my geo. I'm going to say for my scale, I would like for my scale to be SY. Boom. Look at that. That's pretty and fun. And then for my rotation, I would like for my rotation to be spin. Shlermy. <laughs> spin and spin. Yeah. Look at that. That is pretty fun to watch. I very much enjoy that. What? You know what? I'm going to make these poles even longer, right? If I want to change the range of how big they can get. I'm going to come here and I'm going to say three to six. Hopefully this gives you an understanding of what instancing is and some ideas of ways to use it in your own projects and things that you could do for yourself. Please reach out with any questions or comments or corrections. Um, thank you so much for watching. And as always, you did an awesome job. Okay, I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.